Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, do you like my beard? Mmm, it's growing long, eh? It is Movember, yes. Movember, something like that. Anyways, on to the good parts of this amazing video. So, I have some funny anecdotes I thought I'd compile, you know, into um, a kind of you know, expose of some of the funny experiences that I've had uh, in my life. So, one of the things, uh, you know, a place that I worked at, uh, I don't know if I should say this, because it was kind of, kind of like a blackmail thing going back and forth, you know. So, when I was working there as a dishwasher, right, there were some pretty hot Asian girls there, man. And I was tempted to grab one of their, mm, you know what I'm saying, but... I didn't, I refrained, I just worked cleanly and hard and, you know, enjoyed some of the food, but then, they got to spike in the food and backstab me a little bit, and I didn't like that, you know, I took it to heart and thought about it, thought, you know, what should I do to, you know, get some sweet revenge, so, I came back one day with one of those jugs, jugs, big filled with water and that green crystalline substance that you put into the water and it mixes to a gel it gels up and I went back to the place where I had to take out all the garbage and I, uh, I shimmied it down the stairs you know and spilled it down the stairs in a way to cleanse their sins you see <laughs> yeah so that's one of uh, my funny stories as for restaurants, uh, I think I want, I'm just trying to get this off my chest, you know, some things that you, you keep in the dark sometimes aren't always the best to, to keep them reticent and kind of, you know, just locked within yourself. You gotta, you gotta share it and, you know, make light of, you know, what's uh, beset and befallen you in uh, hard ways, right? Another restaurant I think I want to mention, um, so I worked at one called Fable, and there was a lady there, and she was kind of sassing me when I, when she was there, you know, you know, talking about, you know, wiping this and that, but then on the way out, I was, I came in looking really good, you know, I, I dressed up that day on the, on the last day when I was getting paid my last check, and she's like, oh, you look amazing, and I'm like, thanks, and she missed out, you know. She could have this beautiful young man, strapping young man, but she was looking on the surface just how to use it, you know. And that was her lesson, you know. You gotta not judge the book by its cover. It's a very old saying and a very, very sapient of like, you know, how you should really, in, you know, learn of things and appreciate them more. Anyways. There's more stories I have. That, that's only two. On to the next one. Okay. So, there's this one place I worked at called the Flying Pig. And there's this one guy there who didn't want to pay me, you know, the check on time. But I think it was because I was late one time. So, then what I did was I went right when he was, uh, cleaning the fish, and I blocked him, and I said, you pay me now, or I kick you out, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but, it was pretty intense that time, and facing off against, you know, the master chef, you know, and I stood up to him, and, uh, I'm like, where's my money, you know, like a mob boss, where's my money, <laughs> And it, part of it was just me um, having fun, you know. I wasn't being the most serious. If I was serious, then I would have, like, attacked already or, or something like that. But it was pretty funny. Um, there's some other kind of intense times there I had, you know, because it's kind of narrow, the, where, the places that you have to walk through, right? So then you bump into someone, and then... You notice it was intentional, so you bump him back, and then it gets, you know, 
tense. I had this uh, little bumping bump off with this guy named Kyle. It's pretty funny. Ooh, I'm trying to think of some other funny anecdotes. Okay, I have one. So, there's this one guy where I, who I grew up with. His, his name's Chad. I, I won't give his last name. You know, let's just keep the things um, nice and you know. So I didn't see it in person, but he was riding on a bike one time with a like. I think there was no seat, and he was using rollerblades, and he slipped one time, and he caught his balls on, on the bike, and he actually almost lost one testicle, but luckily, he saved it, and, but it was, it sounded like it was really brutal, and we always knew Chad was, you know, a guy that, he was prone, prone to, you know, you know, getting into, uh, mishaps and stuff like that, you know, so, and we knew this because when I would rollerblade and go off, we had these jumps, jump ramps, right? there was, um, I think it was about five feet tall, about five feet tall, and it was curved, right, we built it curved, very thin layer of uh, wood that was like the plywood that we used, you know, that you rolled o up and off the ramp with, and he, I think he tried it in the we had it in the driveway of where he lived, right? And so he had, he was living there with his brother and sister. They all have different dads, right? It's kind of funny. But he he went off the jump and he landed on his ass twice. I, I'm not even making this up. This is what happened. He landed on his ass and basically he's like, oh, he sulked a little the first time, right? And then he went and tried it like 20, 20 minutes later, and he landed on his ass again. And then we were laughing our asses off, and he was wailing, you know, bawling like a little, little runt he is, and it was pretty funny. But no, we, we helped him up too, you know, so that was good, you know. Um, what are some other funny stories? See, this gets me into thinking, you know, the butterfly effect. That's one thing I want to touch on too. This isn't all, all just... To be facetious and funny this is to make you think like um, introspectively what what's the really the cause of wh why things happen to you and around you you know like this one instance of for instance is uh, I think it was around Easter time or no it wasn't Easter yeah. It was around Halloween, I think, and uh, this one guy in a, named Richard, anyways, he was with his friend, I think Danny, and they had slingshots, and so he was hanging out up in his room, right, shooting, he was shooting these chocolate eggs at me, and I, I think one or two hit me, I was like, what the heck, right, where's that coming from, and then I saw, I spotted him up in his window, I said, oh, you bastard, and then, so my other buddy, his name's Juvu, and he came up the street, right, just in the nick of time with a bunch of fireworks. So we took those fireworks, and I blew up his freaking mailbox. I blew it up with an air bomb, and it just, you can see the whole corner just blow out, a bunch of shrapnel and stuff, and burning mail and whatnot. And so I was grounded for two weeks. That was a, uh, that was a long time. That was kind of funny because I, I was getting hit, by, belted by the uh, chocolate eggs. That was a very creative way to get at someone, right? With chocolate eggs, right? And, uh, yeah, what else? What other interesting stories? Confessions, if you will. No, no. Um, but I was grounded, you know, you, you live and learn, right? Another time. I went onto the roof of a, I'll just say a school, I won't specify what school, and after me and my buddies came down because we noticed some people, we were skateboarding on the roof, and it was pretty fun, the The, the material there is kind of hard to skate on because it's kind of soft-like, it's got that tar-like, um, you know, 
softness that the wheels uh, are hard to makes the wheels hard to roll over. So we basically had to climb down after like 10 minutes of that session. And then we seen the cops pull up like two minutes later. And then we're like, oh yeah, we seen some some Asian gangs. They're climbing up on the roof, you know, some Asian gangs. <laughs> so we're just making stuff up, you know, at the time. It's pretty funny. I got some other funny stories. I think what other ones are really funny? Uh, you know, like I don't know if you've ever used a water balloon launcher. In, look into it. I re highly recommend. If you've used, you know, fireworks and you're bored of that, and, you know, after you tried something once, usually it loses a little luster. You know, in a sense, depends on the person. You know, for what your likes and predilections are. But we had this green water balloon launcher, and we would launch water balloons over a whole football field while we were skating in the area by the school and then it would hit the the person's house and they would come out thinking like oh what the heck who's doing that and then they would think oh well, it can't be those those kids across the way because they're so far away but oh we were pelting that and not only that we we even this is when we were kids right so can't get me in trouble for this, but I was just watching this one time, and then my buddy Charles launched it, hit this one kid right in the, on his on his lawn. Psh! He was dripping wet, you know, <laughs> and that was pretty funny, you know. We did some stupid things when we were very young, you know, but then again, live and learn, right? You know? And of course, there was the usual stupid egging and egging and using fireworks and put you know eggs on fireworks and then go into the into the school while the janitor is cleaning everything and blow up the the egg and it would sputter sp and splat all over the not sputter splat all over the walls and the whiteboard it was pretty funny we thought it was uh, an amazing uh, feat that we had uh, done, you know, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of other stories, too. I could get into one where we were trying to film this horror movie, and I had an axe, and I jumped through, so there was an abandoned building. I think it was an, a grow-up, a grow operation of uh, various cannabis, you know, drugs, and some, something or other like that, because you could tell it's... It was a very large property, and there was an extra shed that looked like it was for specifically growing, almost like a greenhouse, you know. Anyways, we played paintball there, and, you know, we were trying to film this horror movie one time. And basically, I had to drop through a, a small opening into the attic, or from the attic down. And then after my buddy walked across, right, because I was supposed to be the killer, and... As it was going down, my chest hit the, the front of the attic opening, and then I went back, and I hit my head, and that was that was pretty harsh. And uh, I was okay the next day, but you know, yeah, that was one of the things that kind of gave me a jarring uh, feeling, you know, shook me up. Had an interesting dream and whatnot, but yeah, that, those are good times too, you know. Try to think of some other funny things. This is all freestyle, by the way. I did not narrate and write it all out, you know, to be like one of these uh, modern day people faking it, you know. Just this is all organic, you know. I'm in the forest I'm with the with the beautiful greenery and pine and all the sap and stuff. Uh, okay, I'll tell you one story. It's, uh, I came here the other year, I think it was last year, and there was a squirrel here, and I threw the apple down, the whole apple, and it was laying down eating this big apple. The apple's literally the, si the size of like half of its body, and it looked freaking hilarious, if you ask me. Some of the things in nature you know, you're seeing are pretty freaking funny. 
just like kangaroos. Like, you know, watch a kangaroo, like, hop around and then fight, you know? They do the beep, beep, beep. And they're like little boxers, literally. You know, screw cockfights. Man. They should have more kangaroo. Kangaroos in the ring, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Put some bling on the fucking kangaroo, on the freaking kangaroo and see how it jingles and bops the other kangaroo, you know what I'm saying? Give a little testosterone shot and see which one wins, you know? Give one testosterone, give the other steroids, and... <laughs> you know. These are random musings of mine, but... Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to think of another funny experience. Uh, maybe practical, too. Maybe even sexy. Uh, well, one time, I it was in a foreign country, and I realized girls change without, you know, a changing room. And I was like, oh, what the heck's this all about? And it was in Singapore, I'll specify. And then it was one of the best experiences, because there's outdoor pools there, and they have jets. And that was all I did, was just sit on the jets and just observe like a like a young pervert you know ooh damn she looks good <laughs> and of course I was enjoying the time with my family and stuff so it was all around a good experience except at the time I wasn't really ready to enjoy the food there the food there was not uh, of my my taste um, just because I wasn't used to durian or you know, everyone's just cracking open that stinky sulfurous fruit there, and I'm, I was just not having it, you know. I was sticking with peanut butter and jelly. That's pretty much all I had, and freaking Sprite. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Yeah, that was a good experience, though. And the banana boat. My sister and I were on the banana boat. It's kind of a silly thing to do, like... Oh, jump on a banana and zip around behind a boat really fast. Oh, what can happen? Oh, if you hit a wave, you might fly off and hurt yourself. <laughs> Which is really what happened because we bonked our heads. And that was pretty brutal. Not gonna lie. And, but, recovered pretty easily, so. Yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend traveling. You get to see new uh, new ecosystems if you're in nature, new ways of life, um, and then the d the disparity of the you know the difference is an easier way to put it. If the languages and how you communicate is hilarious sometimes. Um, you know, one time oh, I'll give one story in Russia. So my ex was like. I think she had to go to the bathroom, so she went to the bathroom, and then on the way out, I was talking with this one guy, who seemed a little drunk, maybe, but he was funny to conversate with. I was like, "Hey, you know, and Kagdala, uh, how's it going, friend?" Blah blah blah. And then she's like, "Oh, don't talk to him. No, you don't talk to him." <laughs> she was afraid he might be like, a, I don't know, dangerous or whatever. But I, I was I basically said, No, you're overreacting. Why are you overreacting? you know? But women, you know, they're emotional. They get too emotional. I'm I'm a man, you know. I got my emotions like under control for the most part, you know? And so, you know I had to spank her into a good order, but I won't go into details and I spanked her pretty good in the shower and whatnot, but um, Best to move on from stupid exes. Uh, uh, stupid exes that just use you for money. It's a shame, you know. All the gifts that you give them, but they just don't want to appreciate all of it, man. You know. But you live and learn. Remember the best, you know. Yeah. On to another. Let's keep this on a comedic anecdotal kind of a tone, right? Uh, 
I said this one time at band camp. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, this one story. So, my buddy, he was trying to jump the fence one time. His name's Corey. <laughs> and his freaking pants got stuck on this fence and just gave him the worst wedgie ever. Just, just the threads were all stuck up in his arse. And we were laughing our asses off because he couldn't get off. And then we had to help him, like, lift him up and help him nudge his way out and whatnot. Cause I hop the fence like a pro, you know. That's how I do. I just climb up, you know, like a monkey you know, over the monkey bars, you know. And just hopped over, you know, and got down, and he's coming down. <laughs> Stupidly didn't look at his saggy ass jeans and fucking got freaking caught like a sardine in a net. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, that was pretty freaking funny. Yeah. Oh, another funny story. <laughs> Uh, these are just gonna keep coming back to my memory. So there's one guy, I think his name was Jeremy, he's a few, few years older, in high school. I think it was grade 9, perhaps? 8 or 9. So, <laughs> the guys were, these two guys were kind of pushing each other by the, the vending machine, just for fun, right? Like, horsing around, you could say. And one of them threw the other so hard they hit the plexiglass and it shattered it broke open and then this guy jeremy's like hey hey hold on hold on we thought we were just he was just taking control of the situation you know making sure like the area is safe so he walks up he grabs like a whole bunch of handfuls of the the candy and then threw threw a bunch up and he's like, and he kept a bunch and then he's like oh, okay you guys can have at it <laughs> and then all the kids basically took a bunch of uh, stuff, you know, it was, it was a funny, funny experience that I remember, for sure, yep, uh, what else is really funny, mm, I almost blacked out one time when drinking, I, I didn't, it wasn't a blackout, it was more just like, it's hard to remember all the parts of like, because we were chopping this one, um, it was basically an old um, tree. It wasn't a tree, it was just like a, an old log. And me and this guy, Brian, chopped it, pushed it into this little stream. And I, I remember recording it with my Nokia. And we, we also played like a lot of uh, different uh, truth or dare. So the truth or dare, we were freaking getting down basically in the tent um, squeezing each other making out oh, it, was, it was pretty intense of a experience to say the least those were mostly good experiences you know those first time you have that intimacy you can con connect you can see on a deeper level, level that you had before you know because I'll be honest, I was a virgin at the time, you know, so it was kind of just like really thinking, is it really worth it, you know, yeah, is this girl really worth it, oh, I'll make out with her at least, you know, but uh, I don't know if she's worth, I don't know if she's, you know, deserves me, per se, so to speak, <laughs> so, anyway, we, we had some funny uh, fights with raccoons stealing our freaking food and stuff, and take their food and run up the tree and we're like, ah, you fucking bastard. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, we had our little sparring matches, beating the, the hell out of each other. and It was pretty funny. That was a whole experience of itself. Ugh. Oh, yeah. And, ooh, I don't know if you tried skinny dipping. Skinny dipping is... I highly recommend it. During summer, if when it's warm, you go in like a beautiful lake and it's just totally refreshing, you know, to your, your energy and your, um, just amazing feeling that you can, when you swim through the water, you know, with no, no clothes on. Yeah, you 
feel almost like a mer, a mer person, you know, merman, mermaid, or something. Yeah, highly recommend it. Um, what other? I got some other funny stories, man. Like, uh, you might find this funny because Halloween just passed. So my dad one time, he he made the, I think it was like this fake uh, looking knife that had the appearance of going through the head and he put blood dripping down his face and when the kids came to the door they just ran screaming you know because my dad looks kind of scary he, he's, he's kind of a scary looking guy you know so that was a pretty interesting uh, thing to, to see or I, I didn't see it I, I heard it you know kids screaming and running away so that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I got some other funny stories. I think I'm going to save it for another time. I got some funny stories regarding skateboarding as well. That aren't super hilarious or anything, but... You know, just sometimes a fluke landing of a trick or... You know, one of the best things about skateboarding. It's not like the most intimate sport because it's very vigorous and it's hard on the body. So, but you still, you know, you you have to push hard to make the tricks, and that makes you use your vital energy the most. So, but anyways, there's one skate park where. I learned a lot of tricks. It was in Cloverdale, and the the ladies there used to flash their their tits. You know, they'd drive by and flash their tits, and I was like, oh my goodness, it happened twice. They would just drive down because it was a big hill, and I guess they were bored, so then they just lift their shirts and flash their tits. It was pretty amazing, you know. And you know, it's been in skate skate videos like Skate Canada. That was one of my favorites when I was growing up. Skate Canada, Dark Star Battalion. That was good. That was a good one. And what other funny skate experiences have I had? A lot of the time getting kicked out of places is kind of funny. It's like the person so you know, intent on making you leave, leave the premises, but then you can you can ask questions like, oh, is this really private property? Because it's it's pretty open, you know. It looks pretty open to the public to me, you know. <laughs> and you get you get in the in the conversative, you know, you could call it argumentative, uh, you know, back and forth. You know, who's right? Who's the right one, you know? That's, so then you gotta prove you're right, you know. That's what I do, Jim trying to make my point you know, the person that has the better point the more you know obvious you could say righteous point should have the right of way you know should have you know have the, the sway but you know people are so hard headed these days they're, they're al it's almost like people are like robots you know wearing masks and 